rescuer Tom Jones quickly understands that the thing the boy needs to do most to survive and keep breathing is the very thing putting him in even more danger. He would slide farther and farther down into that crevice with every breath he took. If the chest is not allowed to expand, obviously you slowly suffocate. It's a race to get the boy out. He's so close, rescuers can talk to him, even touch him. But they can't get him out, and they know if they don't act fast, they'll watch this child die before their very eyes. The first thing we did was build rigging below him, just to make sure he didn't slip down any farther. Next, Tom Smith with the L.A. County Sheriff's Department is able to slip a rope around Paul from above, and he starts pulling. I was pulling on him so hard that uh, I couldn't believe it. It should have lifted up. Someone twice his size. Paul is wedged in so tight, rescuers worry if they pull too hard, they'll yank an arm right out of its socket. That's it, that's it. That's great. Keep it up. Paul needs the rest. The temperature is 110 degrees, and it's even hotter on the rocks. He's becoming dangerously dehydrated. He was just quickly becoming exhausted from trying to help us, and that was a concern also, that, that soon he wouldn't be able to help us. Just an hour earlier, Paul and a friend had been climbing on these rocks, a favorite neighborhood hangout in the high desert, 70 miles north of Los Angeles, when suddenly Paul loses his footing and falls 18 feet below the surface. And by now, an hour into the ordeal, firefighter Tom Jones knows his team won't be able to pull Paul to safety from above, so they decide it's time to call in the big guns. LA's urban search and rescue team, one of the most elite rescue units in the country. And as they wait for the help to arrive, Paul's big brother, Tommy, tries in that brotherly way to keep Paul calm. I told them they will hang in there. You know, it's over at the well, I'm gonna go get some water, don't go anywhere. Yeah. Then, finally, the rescue team arrives from L.A., and Captain Roy, who thought he'd seen it all, can't believe what he's looking at. It was amazing. I was in this little bit of a stun for a second, and then uh, my mind started gearing up. Yeah, I tried. I was down. By now, it's been almost two hours. Paul is understandably exhausted. Captain Roy knows that no matter what plan he comes up with, he'll need maximum effort from everybody involved, including 11-year-old Paul. At the time, he was getting real sleepy. He was like, oh, ask us, do you play baseball? And he said, oh, yeah. And he perked up. I said, you know how it is when you're out there and it's hot and you're tired and your coach wants you to give you just a little bit more physical effort and things. So push yourself. And that actually kind of perked him up a little bit more. Captain Roy runs through his options. None of their usual rescue techniques, holy systems, drilling, powerful airbags to separate rock, seem like they work in this situation. And just then, it gets him. I thought of Wesson oil, you know, get some lubrication. Wesson oil? Not exactly a technique he learned in rescue school, but he's trained to solve problems fast. So he dispatches people, including Paul's brother Tommy, to come back with the popular vegetable oil. They return within minutes, passing the wood with into the waiting hands of Captain Roy. I started just pouring it on to where I could splash a little bit, and I would run down the rock onto his pants and soak the front and back of him. Another firefighter douses Paul from above just to make sure he's good to slip. And I said, okay, let's go. They pulled, he started yelling a little bit, and I said, don't stop, guys. We weren't stopping no matter how much he screamed, he was coming out. After five minutes of pulling as hard as they can, and a grueling two hours and 56 minutes into the ordeal, out slides Paul Harkins. There he is, there he is, there he is, right there on top of the rock. When he started moving, he came out of his pants. His face was done. And his pants stayed attached to the granite rock. That's how pinned he was. Can you go climbing again? No! Firefighters uh, told me that if I would have went down two more inches, my chest would have caved in, I would have died, I would have been suffocated. Paul is in great spirits, but he can't help but think back to those first few minutes when he wasn't sure if he was going to make it. In fact, my first thought was, oh, I'll never see my mom or my friends, stuff like that. 
failed, I'd never see them again. But somehow, the 11-year-old boy managed to compose himself. Captain Roy credits Paul for staying so calm, and Paul thanks Captain Roy, his brother, and all the rescuers involved for saving his life. No words I can explain my thanks. I mean, they, they, were, they were terrific. They did a great job. Coming up, 